Welcome back. As we earlier said, that uh, Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities have uh, participated in the international uh, tourism exhibition FTM Top Risa in Paris. And we're going to be taking a comprehensive look over Egypt's participation in that particular important exhibition uh, with Dr. Yehya Abdel Eder, the tourism counselor, who is with us uh, live over the phone right now. Good morning, Dr. Abdel Eder. How, how are you doing, sir? Uh, first, we need to, to learn more about the IFTM uh, Top Risa at a multi-purpose trade show. Well, actually, uh, Top Risa is a leading international travel and tourism exhibition held annually in Paris and in one of its, uh, the major travel shows in Europe. And Egypt has been participating over the 35 years and this dynamic and vital uh, travel uh, showcase for Europe and the whole world. A major stakeholders of travel uh, in the policy industry, uh, like tour operators, uh, hotel corporations, international airlines, and cruise lines as well. Plus, uh, government tourism uh, promotion authorities we meet annually to exchange trade and services to travel as well as the uh, travel writers, the media, one of the media institutions, they attend this dynamic and significant function. Right. Uh, is this the first time this show is held or it was held before? Uh, it has been uh, managed over like uh, 40 years. And Egypt has been participating like uh, since the 90s. So now it's one of the established travel shows in Europe and it's a dynamic one because it promotes him to like incoming and outgoing travel to uh, Europe and international lines of it. Right. Uh, what about the main activities of the tourism show and the main participants in this year? Well, uh, we have a major weather destination and at the show annually we introduce new products, services, uh, promote new destinations and events. For example, we have the, the World Cup in Qatar, uh, last year, you know, like oh, just like uh, this year, we had the uh, Dubai Expo 20, uh, 2020. So, uh, this is some of the aspects of the international show. We hold uh, press conferences, and, uh, debates, and workshops to introduce new products and make it popular to the public. Mm. Plus, uh, promoting upcoming events, shows, and festivals. So this is some of the aspects of the uh, world of travel exhibit shows of tourism in Malta. Right. Uh, how important is Egypt's participation in that uh, exhibition? Uh, it's very really important at this critical time, you know, like uh, what's going on, you know, like the energy crisis and the conflict between East and West. And we have, like, in Europe, like, uh, generates uh, nearly 40% of international travel to Egypt. And the French visitors, they love to come to Egypt during the winter season because they have a strong passion for the Luxor, Aswan, Archaean heritage. And we remember the previous Francois Mitterrand, who used to come every Christmas and stay at the cataract of Aswan. So it's a very essential uh, convention and exhibition for Egyptian tourism for generated business from Europe. Right. Uh, could you please uh, shed light on Egypt's pavilion? Well, uh, you know, like regularly in Egypt, you know, I like, have to look at the pavilions and the reflects, you know, like the background of Egyptian archaeology heritage. So uh, we have French and Egyptian designers who annually develop uh, our pavilion over there. So it's attractive. And uh, regularly we win, the, you know, like um, awards, you know, like for the best design and facilities and uh, services offered to visitors of such, you know, like uh, significant travel shows and impact. What does the uh, design of the Egyptian uh, pavilion reflect? Well, it reflects, you know, like the Egyptian market, you know, like, uh, like you know, like the crafts, the water, you know, like the uh, kings and queens of Egypt. Uh, it, it's uh, mostly ironic, which is really attractive to the French visitors and to the world audience as well because we have over like 100 countries annually participating in this uh, great and uh, over magnitude show. How can we benefit uh, from this participation in promoting 
for our uh, touristic destination, especially that we are a country or, or on, we are on top of the world uh, that are characterized uh, by uh, destinations that could be uh, fit for all over the year to visit. Well, that's true because uh, you like to uh, look, you know, like at the three remaining months of this year, we have great events that's going to attract you know, like thousands and millions of visitors. We have the Kingsak Centennial that will be held next November, inshallah. And uh, next Tuesday, we have the World Tourism Day celebrations in Egypt, where museum and antiquities and heritage of Egypt will have uh, free access to the public and visitors as well, so they can visit it free of charge. And this year, you know, like for a new production for young contribution to the cipher, you know, like the Arabic, and uh, the celebration about the Rosetta Stone by Centennial this year. So we have a series, you know, like of great events uh, that's uh, going to be on display at this uh, top result, Laville and, and the hospitality show that will attract you know, like hordes of uh, international visitors from Germany, from France, from Switzerland, from uh, Austria, from Belgium. So we'll have a good international experience this year, inshallah. Inshallah. To, to what extent was uh, the show uh, giving a chance to showcase the development that is witnessed by the Egyptian tourism? How did it reflect uh, tourism in Egypt uh, to the European community? Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Amr al-Fazi, chairman of the Egyptian First Authority, was the Amr ambassador in France, and uh, the President of the United They have been meeting the major tour operators, major uh, conventions of airlines, cruise lines, and promotion offices as well. And they had negotiated with them for the uh, constant entry of the international flights to Europe, uh, to Egypt, and it has been very, very successful and beneficial as well. Right. To what extent do uh, so many discoveries which took place in the past few years help in attracting uh, uh, visit people visiting Egypt and types of tourists and also increasing the interest in the Egyptian civilization? Well, you know, like the interest in and passion for the Egyptian civilization, the archaeology, uh, Egyptology and antiquity is uh, growing, you know, like uh, tremendously. Yeah, uh, just like last week, uh, Dr. Ahmed Reis, the Minister of Tourism and Antiquity, he has been visiting the Matareya Holy Site of the Holy Family and its restoration process. And he went to Old Cairo as well for another site. So, really, the constant restoration and upkeeping of our antiquities. And uh, remember, just two weeks uh, we discovered in Etna again another treasure of Egyptian coins that uh, belongs to the Fatimid era and in Saqqara and many as well. So our archaeology, you know, like uh, expedition, which a uh, large part of it is with the national expeditions are working in conjunction with the Egyptian government. They publish and they promote and distribute about the discoveries and that keeps the whole world eager to come to Egypt to see more antiquities uh, around the world. Uh, uh, Dr. Abdel Eder, of course, the whole world is, uh, is undergoing changes. Uh, among them is uh, the climate changes and the environmental dangers that are threatened by these climate changes. Uh, how far is the uh, climate change being an element to be able to um, uh, threaten uh, touristic sites and relics and uh, uh, places, historical places? Uh, and uh, if, this is, if this could be tackled in um, exhibitions and uh, different conference, tourism confer conferences to set awareness and seek means to be able to stand to those changes? Well, this is definitely true because, you know, I uh, remember the social development goals of the UN and uh, we remember the critical, you know, like conditions that our planet is being exposed to from hurricanes to the needles to flooding in Italy and Sudan and Pakistan. So this has been damaging to a great extent the world heritage uh, and the human antiquities built over thousands of years. So now when we are coming the COP27 uh, UN uh, change, uh, uh, climate change conference held in Sharm Sheikh, inshallah, we'll have over 30,000 participants from politicians, to environmentalists, to 
well as media, and they are all working, you know, like to safeguard our our antiquities and heritage from the damage caused uh, uh, by the uh, climate change. To be one, and that's why he did this claim uh, and regional and regional work uh, and promoting this uh, climate change program to safeguard and keep our I mean, world well, antiquities and heritage safe from the environmentalism. The whole world is uh, working. Uh hard to achieve sustainability and as we all know that there is a vision that is already set for 2030 and for 2063 um, the sustainable development goals are becoming uh, like uh, a, 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 an issue that is set before the eyes of every country worldwide to achieve because without them the world is going to diminish so um, now the sustainability of tourism is also a must. Uh, what is known by sustainable tourism has have become also a set of awareness or a plan uh, to be set for awareness amongst uh, uh, many institutions. How far is uh, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities uh, believe in uh, sustainability of tourism or sustainable tourism and how can we achieve it? Well, uh, actually, the like the new legislation of the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, they have set up a department for sustainable tourism development, and they have researchers uh, are working uh, on this issue to make sure that you know, like Egyptian heritage, archaeology, antiquity, you know, like will be sustainable for further and future generations, and they're trying to diminish the dangers and detrimental effects, you know, like of environment like flooding, like rush fire, like, you know, like uh, being flooded, you know, like uh, especially we have lots of our antiquities in the south, close to the major sources of uh, winter flood. So that's why we are keeping on uh, and even uh, creating some um, models, you know, like for the films, like for example, because the original one, when you have over like uh, 200, 300 visitors per day, that's going to damage the painting in the interior of the uh, tombs that have been enclosed for three, four thousand years ago. So this is some of the policy of the sustainable development of tourism that uh, Egyptian government working jointly with UNESCO, the ICOM, with the uh, Getty Museum in Los Angeles to safeguard and protect our uh, unique heritage for the whole world. Mm. Um, um, many touristic uh, campaigns now, the modern ones and the most advanced ones, is, uh, are based on the touristic experiences, uh, especially because uh, the life around us has been totally digitalized and uh, everything is being uh, um, uh, reflected on the social media through bloggers, through people setting their own uh, experiences, through travelers who are setting experiences uh, on different sites. So how important is the touristic experience in uh, promoting uh, the touristic campaigns? And are we uh, um, thinking of using um, or uh, trying to make the best use out of the touristic experiences of uh, visitors who are coming over to Egypt to benefit from it? Well, actually, you know, like, um uh, online and digital voting now is like uh, nearly 70 percent of world travel. And uh, as well, the role of social media, you know, like bloggers, YouTubers, you know, like influencers have been intensified because they have great followers. Uh, and I have even friends, you know, like from Algeria, from Morocco, from the Gulf, who would like to come and do documentary in Egypt. And next November, uh, they will be supported by the Ministry of Tourism uh, in the Secretary. So really this is now the, the name of the game for promoting travel because social media has become one of the major vehicles for communication, for social mobility, for advancing ideas, uh, images, and thoughts and causes. So Egypt is, uh, and the Ministry of Tourism, uh, they have uh, an excellent number of sites, uh, www for archaeology, for museums, for the sites, for the hotels, for the resorts. So uh, um, anywhere in the planet, you can check into this site and give all the information that you like. So when you plan your trip and visit Egypt, it's going to be a successful and enjoyable. 
Right. Um, as we know that the whole world is undergoing uh, certain uh, health crises, of course, the pandemics and uh, uh, in addition to uh, the different viruses that are reflected because of, again, the climate change and its uh, uh, reflections over uh, the whole world. And that's why this is affecting directly uh, the tourism course in every country. Uh, so, um, uh, people or the, um, I mean, uh, experts have uh, sought to seek other means of promoting themselves through digitalizing tourism. Um, talk to us about digitalizing tourism and how does it work and if it's going to replace in the near future with the modernism of the techniques of the whole world, is it going to replace the good old-fashioned uh, tourism and uh, how can this happen? <coughs> well, really, you know, like uh, what's happening during the corona pandemic, you know, it affected the whole world. And, like, like about two years, travel was like uh, reduced to minimum. But Egypt, you know, like, it was one of the early countries to open in like nations for world visitors. And that's why we have Mr. Shkabeli, the Secretary General of the UN World Business Organization, to visit Egypt twice and to comment about the policies and procedures and strategies to open its doors and gates to world travel. But as you already mentioned, even this, uh, during this, you know, like, um, uh, uh, like uh, lockdown, but because of the pandemic, many Egyptian ecologists and tour guides, they were conducted virtual tours using the Zoom techniques, you know, like, they you know, like plans what it like. So this is one of the aspects of what happened in like, the pandemic that being caused in those. And this virtual tour, of course, it's very attractive, but when they were watching it, they say, well, as soon as the pandemic will be over or reduced, will be coming to Egypt to see the real thing. So uh, virtual tours and the metaverse and all of this, this is creative venues uh, for people to watch, but uh, this is not a substitute for doing, you know, like the classical and the tourism of course, with going to destination and visiting the people, having the gastronomy of the country, stopping, you know, like going to theaters and music entertainment. So travel will be more than 55, uh, but still it will be supported by the digital and the uh, virtual reality tool that you already need. Right. How can we benefit from the media and social media in promoting tourism in Egypt? Well, really, it's uh, doing uh, a great lot, you know, like, because uh, as I uh, check uh, myself with the social media, you know, like the tour guides on different tours, so they display the tour life with their friends, what is life, and we know about so many new places that we probably will have heard of, you know, like in downtown Cairo, outside Cairo, in the Wounded, in Halay, uh, in the renovation areas of like Muhammad, Dyson. You know, like you need the uh, flora and so in Egypt. So really, this is doing a great, uh, a great, you know, like, uh, thought to our industry to promote it. And social media is relatively inexpensive as compared to print or TV or radio, you know, or any kind of, of the media production. So that's why, you know, like, uh, the ministry, the, uh, the industry of tourism and travel uh, is developing and growing regularly. From your own point of view, how can we classify uh, the different seasons uh, uh, throughout the year when it comes to different types of tourists? I mean, uh, we all know, and as Egyptians, because uh, we are one of the top-notch countries when it comes to the most uh, visited uh, top destinations and the most uh, charming uh, destinations uh, worldwide. That's why we have visitors throughout the whole year not only through a certain season. So if you could uh, uh, talk to us about the different types of tourists and each season would require a different uh, tourist and why? Well, really, for example, you know, like the uh, Europeans, you know, like they love to, uh, for example, the French, you know, like they love Luxembourg and so on, like, you know, like Egypt, but of course, we visit Cairo in the in Giza and Acropolis. And all of the uh, Italian Jews who love to come to Shamashim to like to our July's Uber to the summer to the beach resort. And we have uh, the Russian visitors 
اه يلا لازم يلا كم تو جادا اما سالم Right, Dr. Yahya Abdel Eder, the uh, Tourism Council, would like to thank you so much, sir, talking to the breakfast show. We're going to go to a short break and we'll come to continue the breakfast show, so stay with us. <laughs> 